Hi there. Uh, I'm a great fan of a town hall, so I'm really looking forward to this session um, and how Deloitte have reinvented the town hall. Um, I'm going to hand over today to uh, Susan McKenzie from Deloitte and Rob Curtis from VBOX. Over to you first, I think, Rob. Thank you, Alison, and uh, thank you, everyone, for, for joining our session today. Um, so, yeah, my name's Rob Curtis. I'm one of the enterprise meeting consultants here at VVOX. For those of you who don't know who VVOX are, I'm sure that's probably the majority of you, we're a, a technology that supply, uh, supports sort of meeting engagement in town halls uh, and meetings of all sizes across the enterprise. We had the pleasure of working with Susan uh, at the start of this year when we were approached around how uh, we could work on reinventing the uh, town halls that she organises. Um, so without further ado, I want to introduce Susan to, uh, to share her story. Thank you, Rob, and it's great here to be here today. Uh, and uh, just before I get started, a um, quick bit of context on Deloitte for those of you who don't know us. Uh, we've got 20,000 people in the UK and over a thousand partners. Uh, we've got five business units, probably most well known, known being audit and insurance, but we've also got tax and legal, risk advisory, financial advisory and consulting. And we're led by a senior partner and chief executive, that's Richard Houston, and I'm his director of communications. So today I want to talk about uh, how my team helped reshape leadership communications in Deloitte by taking an innovative approach to what is a very well established communications channel, the firm wide town hall. But to do this, I have to go briefly back pre pandemic, which does seem like a very long time ago now. Back in June 2019, Richard took on his CEO leadership role. And as you remember, COVID hit just seven months later into his tenure. So undoubtedly a massive challenge for him as a leader, but also for my colleagues in communications. It made us rethink what we're doing, how we're doing it. And pre pandemic, we had avoided using the firm wide town halls for webinars for the new CEO amid, I'd say some concerns about how engaging they would really be for people. But when the pandemic hit, we urgently needed employees to be able to see and hear directly from leadership. And so during the crisis, um, the CEO did take part in leadership webinars covering strategy, well-being, and just reassuring people. And while those webinars were useful as a channel during the crisis, I felt that we could do so much more to really bring to life the energy, the passion, the honesty that Richard leads with and show more of his personality as a leader. So it was earlier this year that we decided to do something a bit different. So I'm sure we all remember the winter lockdowns of early 2021. I certainly do. And I could see that our people were really missing the connection of colleagues and a year of remote working was really starting to take its toll. And that was when I spoke to Robert Vivox about their technology and how we could use it for our first in communications at Deloitte, a firm wide Ask the CEO. So this was an invite to our 20,000 people to join a webinar with the CEO to literally ask him anything. So how did it work? Well, our people access the VVOX platform that you can see on screen now from their phone or the laptop. And during the webinar, they submitted their questions to Richard anonymously, and that was really important. And then they voted for their favorite ones. The commitment was simply the CEO would answer the questions with the most votes. And I have to say that after a year of lockdowns and working remotely, Ask the CEO gave people a moment of connection and that stood out among the plethora of webinars and Zoom calls. Our employees could see on screen which questions were getting the highest votes, what was being asked, and that provided a level of transparency that we just hadn't been able to offer before. The platform also made the CEO accessible. Offering 20,000 people that accessibility, that transparency is so valuable. In terms of my team and what we did, um, it was about briefing the CEO beforehand on the topics that might come up, um, ensuring he was in the right frame of mind ahead of the webinar. And on the day itself, our role was to take the questions that were coming in from the back end of the system to push them to the audience on the app, as you can see on screen. The only moderation we did was to ensure there were no client or colleague names uh, included or no duplicates and importantly we didn't block any question no matter how personal no matter how difficult and there were really probing questions like do you think partners deserve to get paid so much or why don't we have more female leaders uh, there were some strategic ones like should we have a four-day week at Deloitte and then we had a few personal ones like what keeps you awake at night on why did you adopt a cat <laughs> um, 
It's really important, as you all know, that business understands what employees are thinking and feeling, but it can be really hard to gauge that. And I have to say the impact and engagement we got through these sessions was fantastic. It was unlike any previous meeting we've done. So in February, for example, we had over 3000 questions in one session, and that compares to about 150 to 200 that we get in a standard firm wide town hall. In September, that was about 1800 questions and over a third of our total business attended live. And then we also hit maybe a half to a three quarters in the on demand recording. And then the interactions we got through the app um, topped 75%. So I know for all of, of you comms professionals out there, you know that that is a level of engagement that's really hard to achieve. So why did it work? Well, one, we were transparent, we didn't block questions and we didn't hold back on showing the questions on screen. Two, the CEO dealt with the tough questions. He showed vulnerability, he showed honesty. Three, the CEO committed to coming back on the key themes in future webinars to show that we're really listening. And what did it achieve? Well, our colleagues felt that they were being heard by the most senior leader in the business. And I don't think many leaders would put themselves in such a vulnerable position, not knowing what would be asked in advance, but I believe our CEO's willingness to innovate has helped shape our communications for the better. One thing we've got from it, which I know that a lot of you will find valuable, is just a huge amount of data from the sessions. And my team has taken the key themes that were submitted during the session, the top questions, and given that to the UK executive. So it's helping shape future debate at the, the most senior levels of our firm. And we also took the themes and questions and gave it to the relevant teams in the business. So one of the big themes uh, which we were speaking about earlier today was hybrid working, future of work. Um, that came up a lot. So that's been given to our future of work team. But also things around well-being, inclusion, climate, purpose, learning. And then we're using that data to provide insight for our future communications, like what, just simply what we put on the internet. Um, and there's two other big benefits I just want to mention briefly. One was I've noticed a shift in how people across all grades are emailing the CEO directly to ask them a question, share their views on decisions made. And for me, that level of dis that level of engagement is a really big step forward. And I'm not sure that we would achieve would have achieved it without ask the CEO. And the other benefit, which I think was a bit less expected, was building the CEO's confidence. It's not an easy ask to put yourself in the hot seat, but if you can answer questions cold from across the business, it gives you the confidence in other communication situations. So a lot of people have emailed our CEO to say they respected him for being so transparent and putting himself in what could have been an uncomfortable position. And some of the comments that came through were things like, I felt empowered, I felt there was an approachable attitude, I felt included. So really, really positive feedback in short. And Given that feedback, um, the good news is the CEO wants to hold these sessions twice a year. Um, I think the challenge now for us will be to evolve it as the hybrid model becomes the norm. We need to make sure we keep innovating and changing what we do to keep it fresh and engaging for people. And hopefully Rob and Vivox will be on hand to help us do that. So um, Rob, over to you. Thank you, Susan. And uh, yeah, one of the, the, yeah, the big um, when we were planning the sessions, one of the big takeaways for me was just how uh, impactful the data that we've been able to capture through those town hall meetings on the platform and how Susan has been able to use that to shape the, the uh, comms uh, afterwards. Because typically we're not involved in that process. That was a bit of a bit of an eye opener for us and, uh, and, and a brilliant story to share. Um, so, yeah, as, as Susan said, you know, the challenge now is well, how do we evolve them, those meetings and keep innovating? And I think there are kind of three areas really that we're looking to to develop with Deloitte going into into next year. The first one, as we talked about earlier and early this morning's first session, is that hybrid element. So how do you create that level of in, engagement, but in multiple environments with that online audience as well as the in-person audience as well? And how do you merge uh, the two environments together um, and have that same level of engagement as well? I'm sure you can imagine for getting 3,000 questions in one meeting, actually it was only a 45 session, a 45 minute session. So Susan and her team were, uh, you know, it was mind blowing amount of questions that are coming through. So one of the other areas that we're looking at is uh, 
how we can automate in reviewing that meeting content in real time uh, to pull out certain themes and actually how do we then display those themes in, in real time back to the audience actually live during during the meeting. So that's another area of, of work that we're looking into. But probably one of the most exciting things that we're looking at um, and, and working with, with Deloitte, um, again, going into 2022, is how do we take those learnings and that level of engagement in two of their flagship town hall meetings and apply them in everyday meetings across the business. So you know, how do we scale this to make it easy for people to use in everyday meetings uh, to have that level of engagement and also to provide those level of insights um, that that uh, Susan uh, shared, but on a sort of more granular level across the uh, day-to-day work across uh, Deloitte. So I think that's it from us. I personally just want to say, thank Susan for, for joining us today and, and, and supporting the session. Um, Alison, I don't know if there's any uh, questions for us uh, while we're still here before we close. On mute, Alison. Apologies, on mute. Um, if anyone wants to ask a question, please do type it into the, the chat. And we have got a couple of minutes left. Um, we are going to move into our final break of the day. So, um, you know, get a drink, make the most, make the most of the last opportunity to network, stretch your legs. Um, and we're going to come back at 3.20 uh, for the final session. So the session after the break uh, will be joined by Gemma Patterson from Legal in General. Um, you could also take this opportunity to fill in the feedback form, which I know the organisers will massively appreciate. And I'm sure there will be a link appearing in the chat um, for the feedback form. I was talking slowly there in case there were any last minute questions popping up in the chat, but I don't see any. So I think we will go straight into the break. Thanks, Susan. Thanks, Rob. I love that. Um, we've been doing something very similar at Virgin. Um, we call them jams uh, rather than right. town halls reinvented, but um, uh, quite similar. And we've had you know great success with it as well. It sounds like you have too. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.